we have one more speaker and uh, covering a very, very important topic of standards and interoperability. Uh, and I would like to call Ms. Dr. M. K. Munshi, Chair of OGC India, to uh, share his thoughts and the work that OGC has done in this uh, segment. Before I start, I wanted to, I saw, uh, heard the discussions. I recall uh, several years back, many years back, I think eight, seven, eight years back, I was requested to conduct a workshop in South Africa for the municipalities. Now, just brief background. The, the municipalities, what I got, a one-sheet paper from, from the industry in South Africa that the uh, GIS have failed there. Why? Because many cases, they started off with a uh, lot of fanfare. They created GIS labs and GIS facility, and ultimately it did not work for whatever. So I thought about, that's all I had the starting point. So I thought about how to present it to this. Uh, so we had a day-long session, and in the end, uh, so what I did was I talked about briefly about GIS technology, but I talked about implementation. And I realized what has happened was the definition of what was expected by the municipality was not well defined. The industry understood something. It's the classical joke about what is milk. And the blind man said, show me milk. And he says that, and ultimately he says that it's like a swan, so a bird. So he said, oh, milk looked like milk. So something there was a disconnection between, there was a lack of communication between one party and another party and in, in, in that. So what I'm trying to say is, in many cases, a technology implementation can fail because they expect a, the, the people who are acquiring the technology, their expectation is not well understood by the technology provider. And because of the lack of uh, understanding, this can fail. Now, having said that, let's just come to what I have to talk about. Briefly, I'll cover the OGC overview, some programs, and particularly I'll concentrate on innovation program and challenges in the urban space and some completed initiatives and talk about a very important standard called City GML, which is the de facto standard today for 3D urban uh, visualization. About OGC, it is a not-for-profit organization founded in 1994, more than five. It is a membership-based organization in our country. Uh, uh, the, DS, uh, the DST is the principal highest level of membership, uh, Survey of India, NRSC, and uh, NACMO, to mention a few. There are many universities and industries which are members. And broad user community, alliances and collaboration, and so forth. Now, I will, there are a number of programs where OGC runs. It's a not-for-profit. I will focus on the innovation program, and you'll understand why I'm focusing on innovation program, and uh, which is a global, innovative, hands-on prototyping testing program designed to unite users and the uh, and the industry in a interoperability uh, exercise. Of course, there are other uh, programs called standards program, compliance program, and marketing and promotion. The OGC innovation program is a forum for OGC members to solve the latest and hardest geospatial challenges via collaborative and agile process. Now, in this innovation program, now what we have heard all this about Amroth and all this, what we have, we know what what is going on in the country. Say, Ministry of uh, MOA have to define. Suppose they are the sponsors. There, there's a, in in this innovation program, you you have to have a sponsor who has a problem or who wants to understand what is available in the market as far as technology is concerned, who can provide, how to solve the level uh, the use cases, the problems which are going to come up, and who all can do it in a very transparent fashion. So there are sponsors, and, and 
usually OGC acts as a umpire, as as a as a, uh, a, 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 a sort of mentoring and monitoring exercise uh, body. And there are participants. Now, in a in a typical in this exercise, a call for participation goes out, CFP, something like a tender. What it does is, it says this is the problem which the sponsor wants to address. These are the use cases. Would you like to participate? So he says, yes, I want to participate. So these CFP re responders say that, yes, in many cases, they do it for free. Globally, sometimes when, when that is done, the people sometimes ask for money, funding to travel, to commit resources, etc. So I, I will show you how some of these are done and I will narrate to you and uh, one uh, such in initiative which is done in India under the Smart Cities Mission. Since 1999, more than 100 funded in initiatives have been executed from small interoperability experiments run by an OGC working group to multi-million dollar test beds with more than 300 OGC member participants. You can, that level of participation can happen. A whole, a whole national organization can fund it to understand what is available, how to solve this national problem, how to go about. Okay, these innovation programs, initiatives, run from very quick things like test beds and experiments and go up to plug fest. And we, I'll talk about plug fest. And as they go, in, uh, go up in complexity, the maturity, the level of uh, testing of the technology, the testing of the participants, the, the industry availability, their maturity is tested and in a very transparent fashion the sponsor and OGC, OGC being a totally vendor neutral organization, it watches, it monitors the whole thing. Different organizations who participate do it in, uh, in confidential mode. That means if vendor A, if I'm representing vendor A, I'm ad addressing that, vendor B if Mega represents another company, does not know what I'm doing. Only OGC and the sponsor knows everything what is happening. Usually that is done in two sprints, like you get two chances, sprint one and sprint two, no, maybe more sprints, so that you get a chance. If you did, did not do it properly in the first chance, you get a second chance to do it and show what you are able to do to address those use cases with with uh, with uh, software which is uh, standard compliant OGC compliant software and address that issue. At the end of the day, the sponsor and OGC understands. Dood ka dood, pani ka pani. You, I can talk a lot about in demonstration mode when I actually address it using live data and live uh, software test bits. Then, of course, the sponsor and OGC understand who can do what and what is the, where are the limitations of technology. That's a very interesting. Uh, there are different working groups, but of relevance today is the domain working groups. There have got many domain working groups working in OGC who voluntarily work on different domains, which can be public safety, it could be earth observation, it could be uh, underground facilities I'll talk about, which is very relevant to the urban context. And of course, there are standards working groups. Now we come to the challenges in urban space. As correctly said, urban, urban environment is complex and challenging from socioeconomic to technology points of view. The poorest and the richest, the Ambani's, and the street dwellers all share the urban space. And, and they pose challenges for the urban planners and managers to manage and give them quality services, etc. Multi-dimensional space use from underground. Now, underground is very, very important because it's housing in many cities, it's housing the metro. 
But irrespective of a city, whether it has a metro or not, it is housing all the utilities, the water supply, sewerage, electricity, telephone, gas pipelines, and so forth, which is going underground. Typically, the commercial space use on a, uh, again, is varying. In an urban context, well, I talked about underground, but even in a multi-story building, imagine what is happening. We talked about land use, land cover mapping. But here, in an urban context, the ground floor is shopping, there could be restaurants, there could be a nursing home, there could be residential. Now, each uh, have got different requirements which is being uh, imposed on the urban managers and the planners, the police, the fire department, and so forth. Such heterogeneous space use poses challenges for the urban authorities, police, fire, and ambulance, and again, preparedness for disaster, man made or urban. When a, a man made disaster can happen, just like a terrorist attack, then of course, like as we know with 26, 2611, you needed you needed to know the floor plan of Taj to be able to respond. Or in case of fire, you wanted to know which story is that, which is not, and so forth. So there are many challenges in an urban space. I've tried to uh, demonstrate this. You see here is the multi-story complex with different space use, and here you've got the underground. What you see has a term called MADI, Underground Data Definition and Interchange Modulation Mechanism. And so this we're talking about, the above ground multi-space uh, use, sorry, Yeah. So this is, these are the challenges which are, which have been faced. Now, after this, I will now, because of positive time, I'll give you some case studies of innovation experiments done in the urban space and how, what, what, what they're addressing. Smart City Interoperability Reference Architecture, SCIRA. This was an ongoing program and it was recently conducted. There are. SCIRA was a project of OGC Innovation Program sponsored by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Now, you know in the U.S. that the Department of Homeland Security is primarily responsible for terrorist activities and so forth, and science and technology in the U.S. Purpose was to assess the state of emerging standards for smart cities in the area of public safety and development of open architecture for interoperable IoT. The pilot focused on the city of St. Louis, Missouri, to define elements of interoperable smart city architecture through implementation and testing in functional, real-world public safety scenarios. The SCIRA, uh, SCIRA pilot concluded with the on-site exercise and uh, the demonstration. The operational application of the SCIRA design toolkit showed how cities can reap the benefits of standards-based interoperability. At the end of the day, the police may be on one platform, or GIS platform. The fire department could be on another GIS platform. Uh, uh, the the uh, disaster response team, which every every state is mandated to have, could be having using some other GIS platform. They need to talk. And they need to re respond and solve the differences and respond and address these issues very quickly. Underground infrastructure. Very, 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 very important today. And most many things are happening underground which you don't know. And if there are issues of well, continuously the city is developing, it is digging, it is changing, and sometimes it is puncturing a gas pipeline, causing a fire, causing explosion, it is, and so forth. It also reviewed draft version of underground data model, uh, ROI model, cost benefit. The scope of the pilot included street excavation, large-scale construction, disaster planning and response as on account of uh, uh, unknowingly uh, puncturing something. <coughs> now, this I would like to talk about an Indian case, 
Indian uh, plug fest. It was done by NSDI under DST uh, for the utilization of standards and various schemes. Now, there were, again, DST was the sponsor, OGC was the uh, umpire or the project manager. Uh, call for participation ultimately got four, uh, four responders, four people respond, four organizations responded. <coughs> One of them was Hexagon, I, because Mr. Kaushik was here, I would like to mention Hexagon, ESRI India and two other companies. Very interesting uh, thing happened. And a core element of the, which is called, in abbreviation is OIP, or OGC India Pilot 2017, like any other OGC pilot was to bring engineers from stakeholders involved in programs of national importance to a common table, connect them to enable cross-agency, cross-system workflows to be tested. Now, this is very, very important that to understand it and finally come out what works, what does not work. City Chamber, I'd just like to mention, is a very important standard. For example, IIRS has been mentioned. IIRS under uh, this row is uh, NRC is doing tremendous work on city GML. This is a de facto standard globally today for modeling 3D modeling of cities. Finally, integrated digital built environment and others. Now, you see, OGC is working with a uh, number of other like building smart organization. Of course, OGC works very closely with ISO TC Technical Committee 211. ISO Technical Committee 211 is responsible for geospatial standards. OGC works very closely with uh, TC 211, TC 59 and SC 13. These are international standards bodies. So OGC is working with, the, uh, with many of these organizations in the area of urban and built environment Heavy emphasis on semantic negotiation, engaging of national statistics bodies. Summary, OGC has been working in the urban space for many years. Under the OGC innovation program, studies have been undertaken, are in hand for the built and underground environment. Due to time limitations, only a few initiatives are highlighted here. CTGML standards now globally acceptable as the standard for 3D modeling. OGC complements AGI for organizing this event and getting the key stakeholders together. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions I will take, otherwise we take other discussions. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. A small token of appreciation oh. to you. Thanks for joining us from Bombay.